Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time to make our common prayer to you, and you have promised through your Son that wherever we are gathered together in your name, you will be in our midst. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. A reading from Psalm 19. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them there is great reward. But who can detect their errors? Clear me from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Catherine of Siena was born in Siena, Italy in 1347, the same year that the bubonic plague landed on Europe's shores. Already her parents had lost half of the 24 children born prior to Catherine and her twin's birth. Catherine's twin died soon after she was born. In a dark time, Catherine was nonetheless a cheerful child and one prone to mystical visions even from the age of five or six years old. Cheerful, and yet, we would say today, strong-willed. When she was 16, her sister Bonaventura died and her parents wanted Catherine to marry the widower. Catherine refused, stopped eating, and cut off her hair to drive home the point. Well, nonetheless continuing to serve her family with ardent devotion. Eventually, her parents relented and let her do as she pleased. Catherine had no interest in marriage, but although she considered herself mystically married to Christ, she didn't want to be a nun either. Instead, she joined a group of lay women committed to Dominican habits and teachings and lived a remarkable life of contemplation, study, service to the poor and the sick, and writing. To her family's chagrin, she was also accustomed to giving away food and clothing from the household without telling anyone. Eventually, she established a monastery for women and even served as a papal ambassador, helping broker peace among the various Italian city-states, a highly unusual role for a woman at the time. Unfortunately, Catherine's rather ex extreme asceticism likely weakened her health, and she died at the age of 33. However, her contributions in the area of mystical theology, as preserved in over 400 letters and a book entitled The Dialogue of Divine Providence, led Pope Paul VI to name her a doctor of the church in 1970, one of the first women to receive the honor of this title. The prayer we pray today is one of 18 of the remaining prayers attributed to Catherine of Siena, most written during the latter part of her life. Let us pray together this prayer. Power of the Eternal Father, help me. Wisdom of the Son, enlighten the eye of my understanding. Tender mercy of the Holy Spirit, unite my heart to yourself. Eternal God, restore health to the sick and life to the dead. Give us a voice, your own voice, to cry out to you for mercy for the world. You, light, give us light. 
You, wisdom, give us wisdom. You, supreme strength, strengthen us. Amen. There are a couple of things I love about this prayer. I love that it is a classic intercessory prayer, similar to those we pray every week in worship, especially this part, restore health to the sick and life to the dead. But it is also a prayer about how to pray. Give us a voice, your own voice, to cry out to you for mercy for the world. She's asking God to pray inside of God's people, asking to be given not only the words to pray with, but the desire of what to pray for, the subject matter. Give me the desire to pray for mercy for the world, and then help me to pray the way you would, O oh God. If you don't know what to pray for or where to begin, this might be a good place to start. I also love the way that this prayer moves from me to we. Did you catch that? It begins with this most basic, most, basic, most sincere, childlike petition imaginable. Power of the Eternal Father, help me. And then she continues with, Wisdom of the Son, enlighten the eye of my understanding. Tender mercy of the Holy Spirit, unite my heart to yourself. Note the Trinitarian structure. There is absolutely nothing wrong with praying for ourselves. And, and this first part of the prayer, I hear this earnest young Catherine trying to discern a path forward for which she has found very few models to observe. What's a young woman to do? Help me, enlighten me. But following the petition for health for the sick and life to the dead, the prayer shifts. It takes on a communal voice just as Catherine, in serving the poor and the sick, finds her connection to others. And here we have a little bit more mature Catherine, perhaps, praying, give us a voice. Give us light. Give us wisdom. Strengthen us. It is the prayer of a mystic through and through, the prayer of a person who has felt and anticipates an intimate connection with God, a communion that unites her in heart, mind, and spirit with the heart, mind, and spirit of God. And it's hard to say for sure, since this is a translation we're reading, but I do detect just a bit of a strong-willed Italian young woman who's remarkably sure of herself in the way this prayer is voiced. You, light, give us light. I hope you'll join me in praying this beautiful prayer throughout the week to come, and that in doing so, you'll feel the same nearness to God that prompted a pioneering young saint and mystic to write it. Thank you, Catherine of Siena. Amen.
with the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. your everlasting love. That we may serve you from obedience of our hearts. Lead us in the way of your peace. That our souls may be restored. Fill our imaginations with the wonders of your creation. That our minds may reflect your glory. Hear our prayer, hear our prayer. When we neglect the poor, the sick, and the grieving. Open our hands to do your work in the world. When we ignore the cries of injustice in our midst. Open our ears that all may know your love. When we are hardened against our neighbor. Open our hearts and heal our resentment. Guide us in the way of the cross. That we may proclaim the strength of your love. Here on the way, here on the 